racial profiling is a controversy that we have witnessed in the United States of America for a while, for a long time. It actually got its name, racial profiling, in 1996. And we have found racial profiling being described primarily as driving while black or driving while Hispanic. This has evolved into the perceptions that police target racial minorities based on nothing more than their race. Groups like the Black Lives Matters movement and even Colin Kaepernick um, and his protest uh, try to point out and point to the excessive use of force and excessive oppression by police onto racial and ethnic minorities. Uh, this phenomenon was first studied and found to be accurate uh, through an investigation and through a research project that was conducted in New Jersey where they found that if you're an African American or Hispanic uh, driving a brand new car, you are more likely to be pulled over and ticketed it than your white counterparts. And although there are measures and ways and routines to find a solution or recourse for this perceived oppression, very few plaintiffs in racial profiling cases have been successful. Mostly they've been unsuccessful. It's argued that, argued that any search should be Mirandized. Okay. Suspects are informed that they have the right to refuse. Uh, it's also argued that officers must articulate their reasonable suspicion to the suspect before they conduct any type of search. Okay. So far, no court has adopted these requirements, but this is the requirement that is currently being pursued uh, through uh, the Black Lives Matters movement, through Colin Kaepernick's protests, um, and through the NAACP and a lot of other organizations and groups that are suggesting that cops are racist and they target racial minorities. Ren et al. Ren et al. and everybody else involved versus the United States in 1996 case uh, is the leading decision in racial profiling controversy or in the controversy itself. And Wren actually closed the door to a Fourth Amendment remedy for racial profiling. And at the time in 1996, there was a complaint. The, the, the controversy or the, the protest at the time was that people were being pulled over and ticketed and their cars searched based solely upon race or ethnic uh, origin. The courts ruled that stopping motorists based on probable cause does not violate the Fourth Amendment. So as long as a police officer has articulable suspicion or articulable um, probable cause uh, to pull somebody over and to search them, uh, they are free to do so. There are some other court cases that have gotten into and involved in what is a legal auto search or vehicle search. Um, and the Terry Law also came up. But what Wren stated was that stopping motorists based on probable cause, they swerved across the line. They didn't use a proper turn signal while changing lanes or making a right or left hand turn. They brake lights aren't working right. There's a turn signal not working right. You know, any speeding, uh, not speeding, um, you know, not going the, the, with the flow of traffic. All of these are probable cause and reasons to pull somebody over. And the court in Wren said that that is legitimate and basically said it's coincidental that the drivers happen to be African-American or Hispanic, Asian, uh, other than white. In Terry v. Ohio, 19, 
68, sorry, Terry V. Ohio, 1968, the court case that produced the Terry rule, produced the Terry stop for the stop and frisk. Uh, the court stated that officers were allowed to conduct warrantless searches in the absence of probable cause for the narrow purpose of officer safety. They did limit the items to that which could threaten an officer's safety. Okay. Other items found in a Terry stop or during a Terry stop are inadmissible. So what happened in Terry, if you remember what happened in Terry, uh, a police officer uh, noticed Mr. Terry casing a liquor store. Uh, he was wearing a coat that was not proper for the season uh, and they were pacing and the police officer, 25 years experience, stated that he believed the man was about to commit a crime. So he and his partner went and searched Terry and his accomplices. Uh, and Terry was arrested on a illegal weapons charge and sent to prison. Okay. Uh, the court supported and they upheld the conviction even though there was a Fourth Amendment contestant stating that there was no probable cause to search uh, Terry, uh, the courts disagreed and said that uh, for as little as officer protection, a police officer can search an individual. This has a long line of legal rulings uh, that have vastly expanded the stop and search. As we know, uh, from the time that Mayor Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani, was mayor of New York City, uh, just about everybody was stopped and frisked for any reason. Uh, the specifically, uh, evasive behaviors uh, became a justification for stop and frisk, uh, as, uh, specifically in historically high crime and violent areas. So if there's a lot of crime, there's known to be a violent area. Uh, Mayor Giuliani had a stop and frisk everybody rule, and this was supported in the courts. Uh, the courts have ruled that merely avoiding the police is enough justification for a cursory Terry stop. Okay? If you turn around and you go somewhere else, or you try to avoid uh, contact with the police, the police can chase you down and search you. And then anything that's found uh, in the form of weapons uh, can be used against you in a court of law and you can be arrested. There are three reasons that are legally permissible for a stop and frisk uh, in Terry. And Terry states, or Terry is used predominantly in pedestrian stops. Terry is not normally used in auto stops. That's another court case altogether. And when you are predominantly dealing with pedestrians, that's going to naturally become an urban issue because racial and ethnic minorities are disproportionately found in the urban areas. They're going to be stopped and frisked more often. Now here in West Texas, you, you leave Odessa, you leave the city itself. You don't find a whole lot of people walking around. Actually, you don't find a whole lot of people just walking around in Odessa anywhere um, at any time. Um, if you do see somebody that's walking around, they can be they can be stopped and searched by Terry. Uh, the second reason is that you know the neighborhoods that are officially characterized as high crime areas uh, are also predominantly populated by racial and ethnic minorities. And because you're looking at high crime areas, uh, racial and ethnic minorities are going to be searched more often. And third, allowing police to base a cursory search on this subjective perception of evasive behavior. Uh, this does ignore the reality of the minority experience in dealing with the police. And racial and ethnic minorities are going to be nervous and evasive when dealing with police because they're taught from a very young age that the police are the enemy and the police are only out to send you to prison. So the Terry rule, although is great in the 
point that it helps deter crime and stops crime. It does find itself predominantly being used in racial and minority, racial ethnic minority areas. Title 42, Section 14141 is the lawsuit or the cases that are looking into what's known as pattern and practice. Instead of a 1983 lawsuit against a police officer, what we find is more successful is a 14141 lawsuit against an organization. And this lawsuit focuses at the police department itself uh, as patterns and practices where the entire department is being shown or being perceived as targeting racial ethnic minorities. The 14141 is different than a 1983 lawsuit. Uh, in four ways. The first is that the focus, like I said, is on the patterns and practices of law enforcement agencies, not specifically the law enforcement officer themselves. The 14141 cases must be filed by the United States Department of Justice against the police department. Third, it can only result in an equitable or declaratory relief. The individual cannot sue the police department for damages. Because this is actually the federal government that is filing a lawsuit against the end of the, against the agency, not uh, a victim against an individual police officer. The case is also heard by a single judge and not a jury. But we have found the NAACP and the ACLU have found that filing fourteen one forty one cases have been more successful in bringing about change to the patterns and practices of law enforcement agencies.